Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And there is one activity that is more important for successful 3D prints than anything else. And that activity is the activity of properly leveling and calibrating your 3D printer bed. If the 3D printer bed is not leveled and calibrated properly, whether you're printing a beautiful vase or a calibration cath, they will fail. Why? Because they won't stick to the bed. And if they come loose during the print, your print will not succeed. Even if they come just slightly loose, the quality of your print will suffer. Now, I've done a number of videos about leveling the print bed. And in most cases, I've shown you how to manually level your print bed. That is, how to rotate the Z-axis, how to move the printer head while the printer, the 3D printer, is turned off. Now, a number of people, a number of my viewers have pointed out limitations to this procedure. The first is some people are concerned that by moving these components with the printer off, the stepper motors, which are DC motors, and act as generators when they're not receiving electrical current, will generate back currents that will impact the electronics on the printer. I've been doing this for a long time. I've never had a printer control board fail because of this but it is appropriate to move these components slowly when you're moving them. The other concern the viewers have shared is that since the printer is off, the stepper motors are not energized. That means that the print head might move while you're trying to calibrate it. Legitimate concern, but in most cases, manually using the procedure listed in the videos shown on the top of the screen works fine. However, I do believe we can always do better. So today I've created a G-code file, manually coded G-code that will help you in a semi-automated way level your printer bed. Stay tuned and let's learn something together. Before I go to the printer and show you the actual procedure, I want to explain some of the concepts behind the procedure. All 3D printers require code, in essence instructions, to operate. Many consumer grade printers use an open source interpreter called Marlin to interpret the instructions that tell the printer how to move the print head, how to extrude the filament. Marlin interprets a language, a set of standards called G-code. Now there are other sets of standards for other types of 3D printers. Today we're going to be talking about G-code, which is a very large percentage of home-based 3D printers. G-code normally is produced when you take a model and you slice it with a slicer. The slicer produces G-code. What I've done is I've hand-coded the G-code in order to position the printer print head at the various locations I'm interested in for leveling the print bed. So first it will move it here, then it'll move it here, then it'll move it here, then the G-code will move it here, it'll move it here. In between each of those movements, the printer will pause and wait for you to click a button on your printer console. Now, since all printers do not handle all G-codes the same way, I've included multiple identifiers for when it is time for a user to take an action. I attempt to put a message on the display that works on some printers, as an example, that worked on my Prusa. I play a little tone that works on the Ender 3. In some cases, both work on my Ender 5, which has updated firmware, not factory standard firmware, both ways work. 
So depending on your printer, you will either see a message on the console or hear a little set of tones when it's time for you to take an action. I'll demonstrate that. Now before we demonstrate that, let's go to my computer screen and look at the G code I produced. On this first screen, you'll see that there are some lines starting with a semicolon. Those are comment lines. They will not be interpreted by the printer. The first line that is interpreted by the printer is this M17 line. M17 tells the printer to put a message on the console, on the LCD screen. So here's a message saying we're going to start print leveling. I then switch the printer with a G90 to absolute mode. That means I'm going to tell you using XYZ coordinates exactly where to go. Not relative to your last position, but exactly where to go. Next, I put a message on the screen again. Then on the M140, I set the print bed temperature. M190, I wait for the print bed to come up to temperature. Another viewer comment about some of my earlier print bed leveling videos was that I hadn't brought the print bed and the extruder up to temperature first. Since many objects either expand or contract at temperature, depending on the nature of the object, it is important to obtain an absolutely precisely calibrated bed. I do this for both the print bed and for the extruder. Then I tell the printer to home all the axes. I move the G-axis to 10 millimeters above the print bed so it won't scrape at all when I'm moving it. I take and I go to position 4040, which will be approximately here. So these calibration numbers are set up for an Ender printer. If you have a different size print bed, you could edit this file, and I'll provide you links to this file. You can edit this file to move to different locations. I'm moving to the locations above each of the adjustment knobs on the ender line of printers. I then tell the printer to do a G1Z0. That moves the print head to the starting position, to the zero position. That should be above the print bed, only offset by a Z offset if your printer supports variable Z offsets. As an example, if your printer has an auto bed leveling system, you'll use the Z offset to do the fine calibration. The Ender 3 does not have a Z offset, so this is going to put it to the home position above the print bed. I wait a couple seconds to make sure that movement has completed, and then I play a tone. Why do I play a tone? Well, because playing a tone is just one way to notify the user. You'll see here I also attempt to put a message on the console, and then I do a pause, an M0, a pause. On some printers, the M0 can have a message after it. In the case of the stock Ender 3, you will see a wait for user message on your display. So these messages I've added will not be displayed. But to make sure you're aware that that message is going to occur, I will play a tone and that is successfully played on the Ender 3 line or the stock Enders. I then allow time because the printer is paused for you to manually adjust your printer. I'll show you that. Then I just repeat this four more times to go to the other four positions I want to calibrate. So that's all there is to it. Now how did I create the g-code file? I went into a text editor. A text editor is different than a word processor. Word processors put extra codes into your file to control regular printers, inkjet laser printers. In this case I needed the text to be pure text I used the text editor called Atom. Here's a screenshot of the Atom website. The Atom text editor works on any operating system. So it works under Windows, under Mac, and under Linux. You can use Notepad applications on various operating systems. You just have to make sure they're set to save as text files, not as rich text files. Okay, I took and I put this G-code file onto an SD card, and then we just load the SD code card into the printer, and we can run the procedure. 
Let me uh, readjust the camera so you can see this better and we'll show you how the procedure works. Okay, I'm going to take the SD card with the G-code file, put it into the printer. The anomaly on these printers is on the Ender line of printers, the SD cards go in upside down. I'll go to my front panel. I'll select init SD card, which does not zero it out. It just makes it available. I'll go to print SD card, and I'm going to select the G code file with my code. We'll hear a beep, and at this point, it says wait for user. So I'll press the button one time. And now it's going to heat up the print bed. Uh, the screen will switch back to the info screen in a moment. And it's first going to heat up the print bed, and then it's going to heat up the extruder. Now, depending on your printer, you will see notifications to this effect on the front console. It says bed heating in this case. Um, and that's a message that came from the M117 G code command. So now we need to wait for the bed to heat up and for the extruder to heat up. Okay, now the message changed to indicate it is heating up the extruder. And in the case of the Ender 3, the firmware messages sometimes overwrite the messages that I provided. Once again, how the M117 and M0 commands are handled varies from printer to printer. Okay, now the printer is going to do a home and then it's going to move to the first calibration position. So moving to the first calibration position. And you heard that tone, that means it's ready for us to calibrate. Now the printer is still on. The print pad has been heated up to 40 degrees. Now I chose 40 degrees because it's warm enough to impact the calibration, but not so hot that it will burn you. However, the print nozzle is hot, so you do need to be careful. In the case of an Ender 3, it says wait for user on the front panel. The technique I've always used is to use a post-it note. There are springs under the bed, so we can press down slightly on the bed. And then we can see if we can move this slightly underneath. Well, this is a little too tight because I can't move it all. So I want to compress the springs. I want to pull the bed down. To do that, I'm going to make, turn the knob to the right. That's a little bit too much because righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now I'm going to loosen it a little bit to let the spring out till we get it just about right. Then I'm going to press the button here to let it go to the next position. You'll notice that it lifted the printhead 10 millimeters up before it moved it. In case our bed is really off, we want to make sure it doesn't scratch the bed. Then you heard the tone. I can put this underneath, same way, press on the print bed a little bit. A little bit too loose on this one. Make it a little bit tighter. It says wait for user on the front panel. Once again, I'll reach over and press it. And it will move to the next position. Now, do I believe that this procedure should be included in the firmware for every printer? Absolutely. I'm not sure why it's not. But as you can see, it's easy to create. We're ready for the next position. Pretty good there. Go to the final position. I misspoke. Not the final position because I added a check for the center position. Let's check this here. Pretty good. Let's go to the next one. And this is the check in the center. This is actually perfect on this printer. Now in some cases there's a problem on some Ender printers where the bed might be bowed slightly. A good solution for that is just to put a regular post-it note under the print bed at that location. There were some concerns listed by viewers that was the post-it note flammable. 
well, paper um, will not catch fire at 100 degrees Celsius, which is the maximum temperature of this print bed. So that's the procedure. It's really quite simple. Now, to complete the procedure, you press one more time. It will move the print head up a bit so that you can take the bed off if you want to. Now, what I like to do at this point is go and say print from SD card. And I have a print here that I will start. Here is an example of that print completed uh, that was done before. This is a calibration print. Um, and you can see this is absolutely perfect because I can't rub any of these lines off, yet they're very dark. I like printing these calibration prints in white filament. I find it's much, much easier to see. Okay, let's zoom back up and wrap up our discussion. Well, folks, I did go through the actual bed leveling procedure rather quickly. Uh, once again, there are links to a number of videos about leveling your printer bed, uh, which you'll find helpful. What is most important, though, is the concept here. We were able to create a file using G-code that added a basic feature, assisted bed leveling, to our printer. This will work with any Marlin-based printer that uses G-code, and potentially with other printers that support either G-code or where you can manually create a file of instructions. So folks, I hope you learned something today. I hope this was useful. Please continue to leave comments. It's your comments about moving the stepper motors without power and about heating the bed that led to this additional video with another technique you can use for leveling and properly calibrating your printer. Thanks so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Share with everyone you know. Leave comments. And most important, let's continue to learn things together.